Hawa, Hawa, y'all ready to do this? Yeah, man, I got some more to uh, unload, man, before we move on, man. <laughs> Get on with our uh, investigation of the Priest King, man. I gotta just, uh, you know, just give y'all much a high for all the support. I ain't been, you know, if, if you if you like, man, drop where you been. That means you ain't surfing the wave, man. You ain't been on the site, 432thedrop.com. I've been live, man. I've, I've done uh, at least three or four live shows. You know, they come on real late, you know what I'm saying? I'm just kind of testing them out, man. But, uh, you know what I'm saying? Now I think we got them where we want to be software-wise. And, uh, yeah, man, feels good, man. So look out next week. Uh, I'll be dropping the schedule uh, early next week, man, so you know exactly when it is but for the most part you know what i'm saying look for it to come on from 10 to 2 10 to 2 uh, monday through friday man so that should be it you know what i mean that's the tentative schedule work with me but yeah 10 to 2 uh west coast pacific you get on the site man 432 to drop you click the listen button and you're in there man we're coming right out there or you can click my dinosaur ad that's normally over here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you see that big uh, logo looking like an egg. You click that, we live, man. Right now we're dropping the internet. Don't mind us, you know what I'm saying? We're just talking about higher times. Higher times, man. You get the drop on the side. A hop to J. Stu. Y'all make sure y'all dropping on J. Stu and Chameleon. Beautiful family had a beautiful baby girl, beautiful princess, man. Y'all, you gotta show that young Khalifa some love, man. It's a beautiful thing, uh, you know, that our family can come and just, you know, have the support from the community. I know they, I know they appreciate it. You've been dropping in the real time, man. Love to the family, Fred Bergman, man. I wish I had my applause button up, man. I wish this was live radio, Fred Bergman. Uh, you know what I'm saying, drop. A wonderful care package, man. He he dropped me and my fam, man. The entire, I mean, the entire, the entire collection of the mysterious cities of gold, man. I got all the DVDs, all the DVDs, son. Crazy, man. Fred dropped dropped it on your brother. Much a high, my brother Fred. Uh, he also dropped me a, a paperback mint condition copy of worlds beyond the poles man so i got that at all times i did some uh, reading on that live on the radio um it's all good if you missed the live show because it's too late for you you know what i'm saying i get it i just got little babies man i got got four babies to make sure they're down 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 if you're a parent you know what i'm talking about i gotta help the wife man i gotta help my i gotta help my baby girl man so it's all good man uh, but yeah 10 o'clock is, is when i can do it uh, but I repeat the show uh, throughout the day, you know what I'm saying? So I believe it's going to be at uh, repeated at noon Pacific, but I'll give you the whole schedule. Don't even trip, but they will be repeated. They will be archived for you. Um, and again, you know what I'm saying? We did about three shows last week, man. I look forward to doing five shows this week, Monday uh, through uh, Friday, man. Kick off that Shabbat right. Kick off that Shabbat right. Yeah, the Mississippi River is still going dry. What's popping? I mean, when you think about it, the Most High flooded this earth, right? So a lot of the water still hadn't quite receded. I mean, some had enough to get virgin land here and there, but, you know, not all the water had receded. Now we're seeing the rest of it recede. Now I think we're going to see a lot of mysteries popping up <laughs> that we thought were buried. It's not so much that Atlantis sunk, you know, as a... Uh, you know, you can look at it as the water's just rising up. You know what I'm saying? So when the, when the waters rise, they rise. When they fall, when they recede, they, they recede. We know we have waters above, waters below. My sister Larissa been dropping wonderful drop on that, man, about the waters above, man. And, you know, much a high to the family, man. We done been dropping Thai Battles poetry daily, live, on the radio. So much a high Thai Battle. Every time she drops it on us, we try to make a point, man, to get to it and drop it on her. Press the John series full playlist. You know I don't do playlists. Y'all know I don't do playlists. But for Priest King, Press the John, I did a, play, a playlist, man. We got the whole thing running. One through, uh, one through 27. All right. Which is really 26. We, we, had, we did like a 3.5 something. So, 
We're going to pick up actually on Preston John 27, technically, but it's really, you know, probably like 28 or something like that. But we're picking up on Preston John 27. Uh, ones that drop off this, uh, you know, I don't even know if they're going to let me drop this. So, you know, I'm going to keep this short. If you ever want to subscribe, man, make sure you got the password. When they change, the password will change probably tomorrow. So, one, two, three, four is the password now. You know, you can dig on it, but you subscribe. We know you hijack free. You, you'll get all the new passwords, man. And the drop shop, go kick. You know, just go kick it, man. Oh, yeah, this is the link that the sister Larissa dropped on. It's the world map in the movie Courage Under Fire. We're just talking fire. Because I'm about to play a little clip from the movie Rain of Fire. And I don't normally play movie clips because you know how YouTube is, man. But I'm going to do my best to fair use the fair use the gut bone out of this so we can get this drop. I hope it works. I hope it works. Uh, world map in the movie Courage Under Fire proves correct orientation. Correct orientation. And this is dropped by our Aqua, Larissa Freeman. Now, you know what I'm saying? I told you, you know, before, man... Um, you know what I'm saying? I, I had a brother, you know, hit me up on Instagram. Like, what does it matter if we're on the right side or the left side? The right side or the left side? Uh, this is a little copy of it, man. I need a bigger one, man. Uh, that's my bad. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know, I'm still getting my blog on. I meant to make this way bigger. So I'm going to go actually redo this one for you, my sister. The was probably like, man, this is really small. Really small. I wonder if we can make it any bigger from here. View image. Yeah, I don't know if we can make it bigger. Email. Yeah. It's not going to let me. I ain't got it in that whole setup right now. And I don't think we can just Google something like that, can we? I want that to pop up. Map. Uh, in. Movie. Courage. Under. Five. Alright, let's see, man. Roll them dice, man. Don't be afraid to roll the dice around here. I said map in movie courage on the fire. No dice. I, mean, I see a lot of images, but no map. But when all else fails, gotta go to the source. Cause I really want you to see this. What does it matter if you're on the right side or the left side? Cause they when they <laughs> These people equate one side to heaven and one side to hell. That's really the short answer. So when you look on the map projection today and they have you in America on the left, you're not on the left of them. All right. And they have themselves on the right. That's supposed to be paradise, right? That's supposed to be paradise. Let's get it right here. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, this one's kind of flip flop. kind of see what we're talking about at least. Alright, so obviously you're looking sideways. You're looking sideways at this thing. But this is supposed to be, you know, Australia. You got Africa over here. So on this particular map, they got America on the right side. And that's what she wanted to show that in this movie, it's a different projection. Now we know it's still supposed to be flipped upside down. And they got you sideways right here anyway. Got your orientation all crazy. But on this map, you're on the right side. All right? So they do have these maps where they put you correctly on your on the right side. Now, are you in the east or the west? That will put you in the east, right? So, okay. We're just talking about orientation. Love to my sister, Aqua, Larissa. I will correct that so you can get it nice and big right there. So you can always have a drop, man. Let's get to it, man. You know, fair use. This clip is used in research and education, history, analysis, analysis of music, 
in the mass media. No citation here of work by others constitutes any infringement, not at all, of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. This clip conforms to all criteria determining, determining the fair and scholarly use of this citation. Of citation according to U.S. All right, all right, man, you get it. Fair use, fair use, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Don't jam us up, man. That reminds me. Before I forget. I don't know if I got the drop here on the alchemical drag. Oh, yeah, wait, wait. I think I do. Uh, let's see. Was it black? Man, love to my family. Zen that dropped us this link. Black Drago. Dot com, I think it was. I do want to get that on the dismount. Uh, alchemical dragon. Let's see what we got. It's a lot of information, man. You go dragon crazy on this joint. The Al Chemical Dragon. All right, this is what we want, and we're gonna get this on the dismount. So, hey, let's go. Come on, man. Fair use, and they can boost bone, man. Just to make sure, All right? We don't own no rights to this movie. None. Goes to Spyglass Entertainment, Touchstone Pictures, Tripod Entertainment, World 2000 Entertainment. It's a new company. All rights reserved to those people. Touchstone. Spyglass. Not us. We don't own the rights. This is fair use, education, purpose only. We're only doing some teachings and some scholarships. All right. That's it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Now. Backstory. All right. Reign of Fire. A brood of fire-breathing dragons emerges from the earth and begins setting everything ablaze, establishing dominance over the planet. A brood of fire-breathing dragons emerges from the earth. Now this is a prophetic movie because it takes place in 2020. It's filmed in 2002. But it takes place in 2020. You're in 2017, right? So this takes place in your near future. Whoever is writing this prophetic situation about fire destroying the world. Now, our scripture says that the Most High won't destroy it by water this time, but by fire. But how? Because when we dig on dragons, people think we're crazy. We say, well, damn, is that how the fire is going to be? Because when the dragons hit, they hit with endless fire. When they hit in coordinated attacks, it is endless, endless fire. Now, where's your fire, Negro? Naga. And why did they drop the atom bomb on Naga? Saki, my Naga. I mean, you're going to see how they have to go to war against dragons. They say it's either us or them. That's how they feel about your dragons. It's either us or them. Now the Negro then is, is nowhere in this storyline. So you're going to have to insert yourself either on their side fighting against your dragons or are you riding your dragons? Are you riding your dragon? Now you think this is play play this. I'm going to show you this two minute clip one minute clip really. And it's going to show you how the world ends. It's going to show you newspaper clips of Paris, New York, all that <coughs> being destroyed by dragon fire. And it's going to pick up. Now it's going to say this happened, you know, after 2010, before 2020. And it's kind of strange when you see all these fireballs in the sky these so-called comets kind of like a bunch of dragons coming uh inbound you know what i'm saying but let's go let's check out this little clip man and again fair use and your caboose bone fair use man education we get skinny going man let us rock let us rock we just talking about the rain of fire 
You got Matthew McConaughey, Kristen Bell. All right. Uh, Gerald Bell Butler. All right, man. Touchstone Pictures, Spyglass, All Rights Reserved. Let's go. Let's see if I can get this. Uh, see if I can get this on the full screen, man. Ain't no play play. Knowledge is the only weapon we have left to fight against these dragons. All right, listen up. Destroyed us. I saw the first. But soon the world saw millions. No one knew how they spawned so far. I hope you're catching all this, man. Let's back it up a little bit. Knowledge is the only weapon we've got left. In the beginning, it was ignorance that destroyed us. Paris fires. Suspected. Paris Fire. So Paris is being breathed on. Let's go. I saw the first. Dragon sightings confirmed. Now this is the movie Reign of Fire. 2002. Produced. It's taking place in 2020. My Naga. I showed you the mountain. That's laying dragon eggs Hat eggs are falling every 30 years people are worshiping them in china and i'm sure there's many more they're hatching one thing i did learn watching a million dragon movies animated and all is that these dragons they don't hatch for anybody they only hatch when they're in the presence of their rider they only hatch when they're in the presence of their soulmate, man. They rider. If you ain't they rider, they don't hatch for you. They'll wait forever. They'll wait forever for you. These Chinese people have all hundreds of dragon eggs in their homes worshipping them. But they won't hatch for them. They only hatch for their rider. Fat. Now this dragon is a dracon. It's only about seeing clearly. And we're talking about a dragon sighting. Sight. Confirmed. We're only talking about 2020 according to this movie. Let's go. But soon the world saw millions. No. Soon the world saw millions. How does that change the game for you, my Naga? You don't need a strap when you have a dragon. When I when I put out the hypothesis about a week and a half ago, I said, what if every Naga had a, had a dragon? How would that change the game for your captivity? Oh, but that must be the devil, huh? Well, these devils seem to be fighting these devils. So which devil are you rocking with? The one that they call a devil or the one that is um, has a track record for fucking everything up? These dragons have a track record for whooping their ass, not yours. Now watch how they pit themselves against the dragon. No one knew how they spawned so fast. They swarmed like locusts. No one knew how they spawned so fast. They swarmed like locusts. Is that guy ain't doing revelations? Locusts? Dragons? Let's keep going. Burning everything in their path. Driven by one purpose. Defeat. Even then we couldn't believe they were real. Ancient man. They made them into myths. Yeah. But nature made something far more terrible. Too late, our scientists discovered their true identity. A species which had burned the dinosaurs to dust. Whoa! Fire breathing. 2020. A species that burnt the dinosaurs to dust. What's the uh, what's the official story? Oh, some comet, some catastrophe. We're still trying to figure it out. What happened to the dinosaurs? <laughs> hey man, this 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 dragon's against all hijacks, man. That's what you need to know. Who's Ash? I brought on 
ice ages, who in eons past had scorched the world clean of life, then starved, then slept, waiting for the earth to replenish itself, waiting to start their cycle again. Waiting to start their cycle again. What are you waiting for? Are you waiting for a new beginning? Listen up. A weapon shot fire back at them. If every one of them killed, a hundred took his place. Whoa! Now this is important. Our weapons shot back at them. For every one killed, what, another hundred took his place? Let's hear that again. Even then, we couldn't believe they were real. Ancient man, they made them into myths. But nature had made something far more terrible. Too late, our scientists discovered their true identity. A species which had burned the dinosaurs to dust. Whose ash had brought on ice ages. Who in eons past had scorched the world clean of life. Then starved. Then slept. Waiting for the earth to replenish itself. Waiting to start their cycle anew. Our weapons shot fire back at them. If every one of them killed, a hundred took his place. For every one dragon they killed, a hundred took its place. Now I want you, now, 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 now we gotta put a couple things together. Now, we're only talking about a world war. Look how they put this ball up here. This picture of a ball. Do you believe it? You believe this is your ball? Alright, me neither. But what's the fact? That they were dropping bombs on dinosaurs. Now if they did it then. Or if they did it futuristically. That means they must have done it before. When have they dropped bombs on your dragons my naga. Would it have anything to do with. Um, I don't know. The atom drum bopped. The atom bomb dropped on naga Saki. This is play play, right? Nagasaki dragon, traditional dragon dance. So Nagasaki had it popping when it came to dragons, my Naga. Adam Bomb dropped on Nagasaki, my Naga. Every bomb, every every dragon we killed a hundred popped up. Look at all these bombs going off. Nagasaki. Nagasaki Dragon. You think it's play play? There is a book called Live Dogs and Dead Dragons. Nagasaki, 1945. And it goes into their POW story. One atomic bomb and all this. But pay attention, man. It's right in your face what happened in World War One and Two. The cover-up story has to do with this, you know, their puppet show. The same puppet show going on now. It's the same cover-up. They ain't changed the cover-up story. It's always been about you. Always been about you. Every single war that took place in America was about you. Even when you go into the to the uh, Philippine and the Vietnam War, it was still about you. You, my Naga. It was about destroying you and your dragon. Around the world, remember, it's a world war. Live dogs and dead dragons. What do they represent? The dog. What's the dog? The fox, the coyote, or the snake. They're the snake. You're the dragon. Two different things. And we got it before. We got it live. I'll get it again, you know what I'm saying, for, for, for my fan band right here. And, uh, yeah, man, surf the wave with his live, because we do be dropping that drop, you know what I mean? And uh, I ain't made no official announcement, man, but, you know what I'm saying, for for my real wave surfers, man, that have been live with me damn near daily, man, I appreciate y'all, man. Just uh, let me get my twinkle on and just enjoying the flow, enjoying the show. Live dogs and dead dragons. Nagasaki. I just want you to put it together. I'll leave it at that. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can click on these traditional dragon dances and all the stuff they do there. But, you know, the dragon plays heavy. My Naga and Nagasaki.
And you know they've been dropping bombs. I'll leave these articles for you to read. Clearly, bombs were dropped on these Nagas. And it's being told right here in your face once again that bombs are being dropped on these Nagas. Let's get some more of this. Yeah, man, I can't. I can't make it can't make it up. I gotta put it together with you because it, it the truth sounds stranger than fiction every time. They seem to be vulnerable. We can only look on. Let's get it from here. Most of dust. Whose ash had brought on ice ages. Who in eons past has scorched the world clean of life. Then starved and slept. Waiting for the earth to replenish itself. Waiting to start their cycle again. A weapon shot fire back at them. If every one of them killed, a hundred took his place. They seemed invulnerable. Bang. We could only look on as our leaders used their greatest arsenal to destroy. They seemed invulnerable. Our weapons ain't working. We could only look on while they whooped everyone's ass. This is the story that's being told to you that's taking place right around this time. You think Drop is crazy for bringing up dragons out the blue. Well, you know what got this started? You know what this whole dragon shit, you know what happened? Uh, you know, because no one asked me, like, you know, Drop, what spawned you to start... Out of nowhere, talking about dragon. The dragonfly. The dang dragonfly, man. The dragonfly started all of this shit. That one day, I tried to kick it in my little, you know, my little patio area. And two dragonflies kept buzzing and buzzing around and buzzing around. And it, it happened for about three hours. It was the most frustrating time. I just want, it, it was... For some reason, I just really wanted to fall back right there in that spot. That was my spot. And they they didn't let me have it, man. And, you know, I didn't want to spray them with the water hose. I just, I, just, I just let them have it, man. I took that L. But you know what I did? I came in and I started researching dragonflies. Because that's how irritated I was. And now I realize, looking back, the dragonfly started it all off. He kicked it all off. They kicked. It was two of them, so I guess it was... You know, moms and pops, man, they, the two dragonflies kicked it all off, man. I would not be doing none of this dragonfly, 360 degree vision, you know, seeing clearly, Leviathan. None of this would be popping without those two dragonflies in my backyard. And my wife, a week before that, said a dragonfly landed on it. I just laughed it off. I didn't even think about it. And then that made me research what that is. So she helped me put it together. Alright, that's where this came from. So this is prophecy going on in 2010. You know, they're trying to be prophetic. They're they trying to tell you something. They're letting you know that it's happening. Something's going on in 2020 with Dragon Fire. Now you say, oh, it's just a movie. Alright, cool. You know how that goes. You seen Get Out, right? Is that just a movie? <laughs> Dragon Fire, man. Wow. And the few of us that were left fled the cities, found shelter where we could. You have to understand our past, because you will decide our future. They're starving now, and they're more dangerous than ever. Hmm. But we have to go on. We have to outlast them. We have to outlast them. So this movie with Christian Bell, Matthew McConaughey, Gerard Butler is taking place in 2020 and they are trying to outlast and slay all of the dragons. The whole movie is about killing these things. These beasts. These beasts, huh? Well, we gonna get, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> We've been digging, but you know, we, we gonna... It, 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 it has to continue to play when the Most High keeps revealing it. How else will we know to go back to a movie in 2002, revealing a situation in 2020 about a dragon fire war, raining down fire and brimstone, baby. Now, where does the Negro play? You're going to have to choose a side. 
That's what this is coming down to. If you think I'm crazy. You're going to have to choose crazy ass. Crazy ass me. Hanging over here with my dragon. Or this nigga over here on a horse. Trying to put a. Trying to put a. A sword through. Through this. Wonderful dragon over here. Breathing fire. I mean it breathes fire. Fire. Water. Ether. Earth. Can anything else represent it? So graciously. You're going to have to choose a side. Because they have. They've already chosen a side. Are you going to rock with them? You're going to rock with your oppressor? Your invader that's been slaying these dragons? You're going to call this dragon. This. <laughs> You're going to call this dragon a devil and a demon. You're going to call this dra dragon Satan. Just like this guy over here. This guy took all your land. Took all your gold. Mutilated your mother. Ripped you to pieces. Cut you up. Put you in frying pans. Told you you came from Africa. This dragon did nothing to you. You were raising them. They were yours. You're going to have to choose up. Only one species is getting out of this alive. Only one species is getting out of this alive. So yeah, man, we've seen parrots get destroyed, man. Again, fair use and they caboose bone, man. All day, all day. That, that was strictly education purposes. No play play. All skinny, no fat. We got in, we got out. All rights reserved. All right. Touchstone, you know what I'm saying, and all that. You know what I mean? Spyglass, all rights reserved, man. Alright, man, we out of here, man. We out of here. See? We out of here. Atomic bomb dropped on Nagasaki, 1945. Now is this so outrageous to suggest that these World War One and World War Two are all still about you dropping bombs? Well, why would they be dropping bombs on us? They're dropping bombs on your dragons. Alright, that's it man, that's all I gotta say. Nagasaki, deal with it. Live dog, dead dragon, deal with it. This is off of the website, uh, en.uesp.net, I'll leave the link for you. It's breaking down the dragon alphabet. Now you know, just like when you're watching Game of Thrones and that uh, white girl's yelling out all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, uh, words and stuff whenever she wants to have the dragon breathe fire or whatever so yeah there's a language to it there's a there's a vibration to it and just dig on it on your own man use discernment of course man and see what they're talking about you know what i'm saying you got to dig through you know these different you know little 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 gamer things and different things to see you know what I'm saying where the drop is there's something called word walls which is really interesting uh you know where it's breaking down that there's these you know world word walls, these ancient word walls that have these translations on them and it starts breaking down these translations of these, this stone commemorates the horse, Savira the most courageous animal ever to charge the snowy battlefield and give his life for his master you know, these little on this sacred ground did Frito sacrifice her life so that her many children could escape and someday vanquish her, her enemy, I mean these are, you know, little notes left with Folks and they dragons, man. You know what I'm saying? They call them, uh, you know, messages or word walls, they say. But yeah, man, it's a dragon language. My bro, uh, Silas looked at this. He said, uh, it looked like, uh, Sumerian. So, you know, compare this with Sumerian, man. Go, go crazy. See what's out there, man. Um, you'll notice that each of these, uh, letters here have three marks. So, you know, you gotta imagine the three talons, the talons on the, on the dragon, you know what I mean? Literally you know, using its claws, like claw marks, you know what I'm saying? And since the letter C does not usually appear due to the fact that the letter is unused in dragon language. So just like, why, why would you need a C when you got a K? What, to make an S sound? You got an S, you know what I mean? So it sounds, sounds, sounds a little hijack free to me. You know, this, this C came up, remember it came out of your, your gamal, or your gam, gam, gamal. Then they change it, change it to C in the Latin. Come on, man. What else we got here? The dragon language, myth no more. I'll leave this. 
off the site www.imperiallibrary.info you know what I mean it's like you know it's a game called Skyrim and there's a lot of research in this game called Skyrim I suggest anyone serious about dragon language or you know what I'm saying to get you know some of this deeper dragon drop you know, check out this uh, game S-K-Y-R-I-M and again you know dodge or hijack use the sign and do your thing you got the you got the glow, man. So you know what I'm saying you gonna know what it is and what it ain't. Now it says since Skyrim used a font to encode the dragon script, we are able to provide direct translations to the text. All right, so here's this text called Myth No More. It says dragon. It's the word conjures nightmare images of shadowed sky, or I guess it's a nightmare to them. The world's being destroyed in endless fire. Hideous roaring and endless fire. Here we go. Endless fire. That's what we keep hearing. Keep popping up. <laughs> when it went down with the Nagas, man, it was endless fire. Indeed, the dragons were terrifying beasts that were once as numerous as they were deadly. As numerous as deadly. But what most Nords don't realize is that the dragon were in fact not simple mindless beasts indeed they were thriving intelligent a thriving intelligent culture one bent on the elimination or enslavement of any non-dragon civilization in the entire world so Prester John the Emperor of the Indies is the Emperor of the world when the Most High you know what I'm saying bless your kingdom here you ruled the world and your dragons <laughs> eliminated all non-dragon civilization so they all had I mean when you think about it you're like what why are they so hard on these Negroes man these Nagas it's like around the world they hate your ass right it's it's, it's a deep rooted fear but you're like why are you afraid of my my uh you know what I'm saying my creativity my my this my that whatever the case is are they afraid of, you know what I'm saying, my talent, my this? They afraid of your dragons, man. It's a deep fear. You're talking about endless fire. You're talking about the full connectivity. They're afraid of your power. They don't comprehend where your power is coming from. And you see how it was easy for us to lose focus when we had so much power. It says they are a thriving, intelligent culture, one bent on the elimination or enslavement of any non-dragon civilization. So how did they flip it? In the Papa Bull, they said, we're going to roll up on all non-Christian civilizations, which are snake civilizations. They're the snake. There's a difference. And in alchemy, there's a big difference. And that's what we dropped before live on the radio. That's what I'm going to drop real soon right here. So, you have, uh, all right. It therefore stands to reason that the dragons would require a way to communicate with one another that they would need to speak. And through much research, scholars have determined that this is exactly what the dragons did for the mighty roars of the beast. For the mighty roars of the beast or of the dragon, even when those roars contain fire, listen closely because we're talking vibration. We got to look beyond the veil. We got to look beyond the barrier. For the mighty roars of your dragon, even when those roars contain fire or ice, remember some dragons breathed ice, some breathed fire, or some other deadly magic, were actually much more. So they see it as just fire coming out, or ice, or something else. But they were actually much more. They were words. It wasn't just fire coming out. It was a word. It was a vibration. Which is why you spoke a vibration to get it to speak a vibration. Now this vibration meant, you know what I'm saying, curtains for whoever, you know what I'm saying, was in its path. Words in an ancient, though decipherable tongue. So what word, don't you want to know what word the dragon is saying when it's spewing fire? Let's see. Nonsense you say. Sheer folly on the part of some over-ager academics. 
I thought precisely the same thing, but then I started hearing rumors that odd snippet of a conversation from some brave explorer or gold coveting crypt diver. And always, always, it was the same word repeated. So it's always the same word. And you know what that word is? It says it right here. Wall. W-A-L-L. Now, because we surfed away, we can look at it in a couple of different octaves. We can say, so this dragon is literally saying the word wall in English. <laughs> Wall seems a little corny. I mean, we know we're talking about a wall of protection, but is it literally yelling out wall or is it yelling out wall? And then, like, what does it say? Wall, wall. What's wall? It is your shape. A wall. Who knows it's not saying a wall? You know what I mean? Wall. All right. So you got to dig on your translation of this dragon fire. They want to translate it to an English word. <laughs> I say it's wa or a wa that the dragon is saying. So I listened more. I began to arrange the pieces of the puzzle and slowly unravel the mystery spread throughout Skyrim and ancient du dungeons, burial grounds, and other select secluded places. There are walls. Black ominous walls on which is written a script so old so unknown none who had encountered it even began its translation in my heart I came to know the truth this was proof of the ancient dragon language for what else could it be it only made sense that these walls were constructed by the ancient Nords now remember the map that we had that showed Nord America N-O-R-D America and it had a word for South America. But North America was called Nord America. Alright. Nords who had lived in the time of the dragons. And out of fear or respect. Had somehow learned and used the language of the ancient beast. Or the ancient dragon. So out of fear and respect. You knew how to speak the language. The ancient language. The vibration of your dragon. But at the same point, all I had was my own gut instinct. Alright, man, so I'm gonna skip down right here. It says one can almost envision a majestic dragon using his great sharp talons to carve the symbols into the stone itself. And a human witness, possibly even a thrall or servant, learning, observing, so that he too could use the language for his own ends. Alright. Alright, so again it has you know, some depictions of this language, and you go ahead and search it out, man. I think that's a mighty interesting. Of course, you got this, the grammar here, so I'll leave this link to showing you the grammar of the language. All right. Very interesting, man. I mean, you think this is play play? You think they just made this up in a video game that you never heard of? All right. So man, we just surfing the wave, man. Let's get this uh, alchemical dragon right quick, man. And again, get the drop, get the drop live, get the drop live so you don't miss out. You would have heard about this a week ago, man. <coughs> Let's go. Make our dismount get out of here. Alchemical symbolism and allegory. Allegory is a device that uses characters or events to represent ideas and concepts in literature. Allegory is also referred to as extended metaphor however all forms of art utilize allegory in alchemy allegories were multi-purpose to obfuscate to reveal to eclipse the truth and to eliminate or illuminate the truth so you got this allegory this myth to eclipse the truth obfuscation prevents individuals from deciphering meaning from alchemical text so they put obfuscations they put barriers up so you don't get the meaning so only those who dedicated themselves to studying the work would be able to understand in some instances mistrust inspired the tendency towards obscurity since some alchemists feared their work would be stolen or misused however alchemists did not mystify their work just to hide knowledge for to the alchemist knowledge is poisonous or healing in the wrong context 
poisonous or healing. In the wrong context, knowledge taints understanding. I mean, aren't you a witness many times to this? You know, knowledge taints understanding. Conversely, knowledge unseals the doors of perception. And there's a great script on this. I uh, love to uh, Jay Stu. He dropped in a copper thread. And, you know what I'm saying, when he uh, gets this drive, he's going he's gonna to remember it right away. And he asked, you know, like, what does this mean? You know what I'm saying? I wish I had it on, on deck right here. But, um, you know, it was, it was pretty much saying, you know, um, you know, don't don't try to seek too much, um, you know, too much with the saying, too much goodness or too much this or too much that. It's about the balance. It's about knowing, you know what I'm saying, knowing your path and, and not overachieving just for the sake of having knowledge. Some people just want the knowledge, but they don't want the foundation. They don't want, they don't have the patience to get the foundation. That's a beautiful script. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, hopefully I'll get that next time. In their everyday use, however, allegories are meant to reveal. They, they illustrate a larger concept. So let's get down, man, to this larger concept. So you got the alchemical salamander, the alchemical caduceus. All right. It's very interesting because you're only dealing with Hermes. Oh, we got that thought. You see, green. That's interesting. You see this dragon in the back. You know, same type of eating its tail, that snake eating, eating its tail type thing, but you've never seen it dragon form, right? But what does it mean? What's the difference between the alchemical serpent and the alchemical dragon? So let's start with the serpent. Because this is big. A lot of times we look at Egypt or other cultures, you know, Sumeria or whatnot, and they always are rocking this this snake and we always think that oh whenever you read serpent in the scriptures you're referring to snake sometimes it's dragon serpent is tricky because they hide dragon and serpent you don't know if serpent is referring to the snake or the dragon uh, in this case we're only talking the snake so you see it, it's an absolute clear-cut difference and I want you to pay attention to how different these two cultures are from snake to dragon Egypt does not rock with the dragon. And you're under Egyptian captivity, and they don't rock with the dragon. See, the dragon is native here. And even though we have Egypt here, Egypt was hijacking us here. Egypt is not natural here. Atlantis is not natural here, and Egypt came out of Atlantis. Atlantis is not natural here. We're talking about Poseidon Sea. We're talking about the hijack, 100. We're talking about Cain and Knight. All the same snake. So if they rock with the snake, this is what we're talking about. Now these snakes or serpents often represent the impersonal nature of the unconscious. I want you to dig on this because we're about to make our dismount and I need it to be clear. The difference between a snake and a dragon. When Moses' staff turns into a fiery flying dragon, they say fiery flying serpent. But what's a fiery flying serpent? It's a dragon. So when Moses' staff turns into a dragon and devours those two snakes from the Pharaoh. Remember they deal with duality. Moses is dealing with unity with his dragon, his one dragon against their two snakes and he devours it so there's a dragon energy and a snake energy a dragon fire water air earth that's devouring the venomous poison snakes what is a snake often represent the impersonal nature so it's not even personal they don't know the creator it's not even a personal they have no connection with nature it's impersonal right from the gate the snake is impersonal nature of the unconscious so it starts unconscious as it bursts into consciousness so it's just now becoming conscious now they're bursting into consciousness it goes from unconscious to conscious but you didn't have to go from unconscious to conscious you were born into fire water air and earth Adam was shining like a crystal. It was Adam wasn't formed unconscious. He was formed perfect. Perfectly conscious. And that's the dragon. 
their snakes have no consciousness as it burst into consciousness but how did it get its consciousness remember they eat your dragon right remember the press of John and the gypsies how it says in Western Europe might have to get that again man. just in case y'all think it's play by I'm just, I'm just gonna get it ready you know get in that library man almost got 200 PDFs for you to dig on in these moments like this where you're like man ain't there a book ain't there a book talking about something like that press the John and the gypsy Come on, man. Let's go. Oh, yeah, man. We got some good stuff going down, man. Much a hop to everyone copping them drop shirts, man, and dropping on PayPal, swag. man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We back in swag frequency, man. We back in swag frequency. That much you do, man. All right, let's get this drop right quick make our dismount. A hop to the tribe, tribing up all across the planet. If it ain't about tribing up, man, what you doing it for? Let go. Man, yeah, you see the work, man. This is y'all work. Press the John and the Gypsy. Page 146 is actually page 9 of this PDF. It's only a 15 page. Kind of a snippet of it. Let me know if you got the full joint, man. We'll put it on here. Alright, we're going to get right back into alchemy. It's about to get deep. Our dismount's going to get deep. Let's go. The Crusaders. The Crusaders consisted of feudal nobility, soldiers, pilgrims, and adventurers of all sorts from all parts of Western Europe, man. We're talking about melanated people. Melanated. King George was melanated in 1700s. Right? Joined and manipulated by Italian merchants. It has been said that before the Crusades, communities throughout the greater part of Europe had lived very much themselves in limited contact with the outside world. They were trapped, just like the insular world. Insular World series I did way back. Insu insular War Worlds, man. It's a, it's a tongue twister. Go check that out, man. Insular Worlds. Insular Worlds. All right. Try saying that three times. Uh, but yeah, man, it shows how everything was trapped and, you know, trapped in the um, Straits of Gibraltar. The Atlanteans pretty much had them trapped over there. The, the Atlanteans are the Moors, are the Confederacy, are the, are, you know, this whole Mexican situation. So, you know, of course, you had these so-called Caucasians that were in captivity <laughs> from melanated family over there. Then they got let loose from there to go jam us up over here, but they still had to do treaties and work for them. And then they tried to separate from them in their Declaration of Independence 1776. That's the first time they tried to get separate from melanated rulership. But what happened with your dragons? In Western Europe, we're just talking... The Confederacy of Psalms 83. Moab, Ammon, Amalek. Let's go. Esau, let's go. They calling them Ethiopians. Remember, that's just a that's just a uh, generic term. Ethiopian is West and East. Any dark skinned region is Ethiopia. Originally, and we're only talking Greek words and Greek terminology, right? Now check it down here. Check it on down here. There's an interesting paragraph written in the 13th century, the 1200s. Right? Love to hire Mark, man. He, he's digging on that chronology, you know what I'm saying? That the uh, 1200s are really the 1700s and he broke that down. So you're really just talking the 1700s. 
about some exotic strangers in the Western year, Western year. Now, remember I said that that King George is melanated. Benjamin Franklin broke that down in, in that document. So you have a black King George in the 1700s. And I just said, or Hiram broke it down perfectly, that the 1200s are the 1700s. These people skipped around so much chronology on us. With a black king in the 1700s in Europe. Well, let's surf that wave of black King George in the 1700s. About some exotic strangers in Western Europe. Who's these exotic strangers called Ethiopians in West Europe? West Europe. Black King George in them. Now, what was, what was black King George the Ethiopian doing? The reptile that the Ethiopians eat is the dragon. Tell me it's play play. Tell me it's play play. The reptile that the Ethiopians eat is the dragon for it is well known that the wise Ethiopians have come to Italy and Spain. More France, England, and those countries of the Christians where there are good flying dragons, man. Good flying dragons. You just saw the clip of this movie with dragon fire raining down 2020 and before. Because it happened before. That's why all these people... Look, Apollo had to slay a dragon. Apollo. Now, in that war between Apollo and that dragon, whose side are you on? Go. Because Apollo, Abaddon, we're only talking Zeus. Whose side are you on? Because he has to slay a dragon. Now, what was black-ass King George and our black-ass melanated family doing? Over there in West Europe. Where there were good flying dragons. And that by occult arts. By occult arts. That's magic. Right? So you have your dragon magic. And they have magic too. They have secret magic science too. This is your family. This is a melanated family. So your melanated family got magic just like you. But you have a higher order of it when you're in order. I said, Negro, you have a higher order of magic when you're in order. They can't fade your dragons. Look at what they had to do to live. By magic occult arts, which they possess, they drive the dragons out of their caves. So they use their magic spells to drive the dragons out of their caves. And they have an art of preparing their flesh. Every time I read this, it gets my blood boiling. Because this is what they did. Facts. Now you think I'm crazy. Th Drop, is cra Drop Nation crazy for digging on dragons? Are you serious? It appears that it's already been dug on. Dug on so much by necromancy that they're coming out their caves. They have an art of preparing dragon flesh. And they partake of it against. They partake of it against. They partake of your dragons against accidents of old age. Against accidents of old age, which means that they reverse their age like the fountain of youth by eating your dragon, which gives them life. Well, how are they getting life by eating your dragon? They have an art of preparing dragon flesh. They drive them out their caves with their occult arts, magic, magic, necromancy, spells. You're under a spell, my naga. They dropped a bomb on you, man. They dropped a bomb on me. And you. They dropped a bomb on us. 
So we looking around, we been split and splattered. We gotta be patient with each other. We got a bomb dropped on us, man. The atom bomb dropped on the Naga. I'm just talking live foxes, live dogs, live coyotes, and dead dragons. So in Spain, Italy, France, England, where there are good fine dragons, they use their magic to drive your dragons out of their caves, and they have an art of preparing your dragon's flesh, and they partake of it against accidents of old age, and prolong their lives, and make their intellect subtle beyond all estimation, so they get smart as hell, and young as hell, when they eat your dragon. Now you'll also learn by digging on dragons that when they killed you they killed your dragon so the easiest way for them to kill your dragon is what for them to kill you which is why they enjoy killing you so much because if there's a dragon out there connected to you they kill that dragon too and then what they prepare its flesh and they partake of it against accidents of old age and prolong their lives and make their intellects subtle beyond all estimation. That means smart as fuck. And that's from the Opus Magis in 1266 or 1766. If you're rocking one higher, which I am, it is not necessary to speculate here that these so-called Ethiopians were in fact gypsies. Now do me a favor and put an E right in front of this gypsies. And what do you get? Egypt sees. Egypt. With permissions of the Pharaoh, can we have our Amexum as Moabites? We need permission from the Pharaohs of Egypt sees. Ethiopians, Egyptians, Ethiopians, Egypt, Egypt. Pharaoh. Atlantis, Amexum, Psalms 83, Hijack 101, Boule, and only to comment on the surprising amicable attitude of the Western European towards gypsy like strangers. Oh, and they're, oh, so, so, so they were welcome. The Western European welcomed the Egyptians. It seemed like they had a confederacy, and at the end of the day, we're only talking Preston John. The year 1122, 12th century. It seems like the 12th century plays major, does it not? Or the 17th century, does it not? Oh yeah, they ate your dragons and had an art of preparing their flesh and to partake of it against accidents of old age. So they got younger every time. We're only talking about the alchemical dragon and alchemical serpent. So let's finish reading the serpent, the snake, the impersonal nature of the unconscious bursting into consciousness, especially in mythology and dreaming, when the act of conientio, the bringing together of opposites occurs. The serpent is frequently part of the symbolism. So this opposites attract is the trichnology that we got in that, uh, you know, big headed scientist, Jacob, the scientist who who uh, hated all melanated people and he said well I have a new theory called opposites attract what happens when you have opposites attract you hate yourself so this Jacob hated himself so he created technology of opposites attract so there I mean do you really want your opposite think about it your opposite is the one who invaded you so be careful about looking for your opposite you 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 want someone surfing the way right <laughs> You don't want your opposite. So it, it's senseless to think of the opposites attracting, right? That's their motto. Get out the mind of a hijack. The serpent is frequently part of the symbolism. So the serpent or the snake has to do with opposites. Keep that in mind. Opposites attracting. This is, this is especially true when representing an androgyny, i.e. the image of the union of king and queen as a single androgynous god might also have both holding a serpent. 
Serpents represent everything from the monstrous snake to the cosmic serpent. So see, they know a lot about these snakes. And you're going to see the difference when we get into the dragon. They don't know shit. Oh, the cosmic serpent. The celestial dragon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the monstrous snake. The cosmic. So cosmic is very important. Because the dragon got nothing to do. The, the actual energy of the dragon got nothing to do with the cosmic. They call it unknown. They know where the snake comes from. It's the celestial. Underneath the firmament. Underneath the barrier. We're talking the underworld. The underworld. Underneath the firmament. The underworld of the cosmos. The underworld. That is an underworld. Depending on your perspective. The cosmic spirit. The supreme serpent brings everything to life, but also kills everything. Body bag, Daniel. So this hijacked celestial spirit serpent, supreme snake, brings everything to life, but also kills everything. Kills everything. Kills everything. I'm talking massacre. I'm talking invasion. I'm talking Papa Boo. Invade. Search out. Vanquish. All Israelites. The monstrous serpent. Oh, the cosmic serpent. The celestial, right? It's everything and nothing at the same time. Damn right it ain't shit. The monstrous serpent is an impediment, a danger. When a person hides in false shelter or prison violence or and fire is needed. When a person hides in false shelter or prison, violence and fire is needed to escape the danger of the diabolical serpent. You need fire. What the most high said, I'm going to rain down fire. Dragon fire. To kill what? The diabolical snake. In times of spiritual and emotional turmoil, a person can become bound to this monstrous serpent. We're just talking the Thoth spell berry. We're talking Egypt. To break that bond, the individual may fight or may simply endure the fire till it burns itself out. What are you going to do, Negro? Are you going to fight or are you going to endure the fire till it burns itself out? You're going to sit in the pot and let it warm up. And burn your ass up until it burns itself out. Remember, you got put in perpetual servitude, perpetual slavery by the Pope in 1452, dumb diverses. So that fire is perpetual. It ain't supposed to burn out, right? And that's what you need to know about the snake. Any questions? That's the alchemical snake. What's the difference between a dragon and a serpent? Let's see. The alchemical dragon. The alchemical dragon represents the philosophical quicksilver. What is that? You dig on it. Unlike ordinary mercury. This is major. Because whatever this philosophical quicksilver is. Is unlike what they're calling ordinary mercury. Remember Thoth represents mercury. Right? Do we remember that? I uh, love to uh, Karu Mayu, man, digging on that uh, Thoth Mercury, you know what I'm saying? Hermes connection, man. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We gotta, just got to keep getting our babies, man. Keep it coming, man. Mercury. Thoth. Mercury. Hermes. Trigamagestus, Thoth, any questions? Mercury, Thoth, Mercury, Thoth, okay. Okay. Oh yeah, we good, good. Let's get this dismount, man. You know what I mean? So the alchemical dragon, the alchemical dragon represents the philosophical quicksilver. So whatever this is, they don't know. They're just calling it quicksilver. Now listen, unlike ordinary mercury, the philosophical quicksilver is a mysterious substance of unknown origin. 
Did it say it comes from the cosmos? Do you see the cosm cosmos or cosmic written anywhere next to a dragon? You got it. Look at it. Put up the link. So unlike ordinary Mercury, unlike ordinary Thoth. So we're not talking about this Thoth hijack, ordinary hijack. We're talking about something that is mysterious and unknown. If it's unknown, that means it comes from the greater light. Remember Thoth said, he, he, you got to run from the house of the barrier. Because beyond that is the greater light. If Thoth is claiming a greater light, I'm rocking with that. I'm rocking with the greater light. He's running from it, right? And you're worshiping Thoth. And he's running from the greater light. The dragons of the barrier. Let's go. From this quicksilver, the living spirit can be extracted. So from this unknown substance of mysterious origin, unknown origin, they get living spirit from your dragon. Not cosmic spirit. Not celestial spirit. Living spirit. Extracted from this unknown origin of this dragon, which means seeing clearly. What else? What else do they get a living spirit from your dragon? They have an art of preparing their dragon flesh and they partake of it against the accidents of old age and prolong their lives. Living spirit. So, right here in the physical sense, you have them literally eating your dragon and getting new life. And in the alchemical sense, you have them literally extracting the living spirit from this mysterious substance of unknown origin. While the dragon does not represent this living spirit, so they say, but watch this. It is the vessel in which the spirit is contained. Well, I think that means it represents the living spirit. If it's the vessel that the living spirit is contained, it might represent the living spirit. Dies to hijack. Let's go. Some alchemical texts mention a process to identify the spirit or the soul of all things. The dragon is prepared from the philosopher's venom. So you heard about the philosopher's stone. All right. All that's connected to this, you know, fountain of youth. You know what I'm saying? Alchemy, you know, it's more than about turning stuff into gold, man. It's about the elixir to give life or to, you know what I'm saying, take something from this stage and. And, and put it in this higher, highest place. But really the alchemy is within you. Because you've been able to take all that negativity and turn it into something beautiful. That's the philosopher's venom. You know what I'm saying? That's the uh, philosopher's stone. That's the, that's the youth. That's the life. That's the living spirit. You made life out of death. They brought death on you. You turned it into life. That's alchemy, my people. My naga, you are masters. Let's go. The Mercurius, they call it, fires up the primordial dragon, giving it wings. In a physical sense, this is the process of vaporization. Go dig on that uh, alchemy drop. We dropped love to Urban Reed for bringing that up for us and doing great work. Love to Miss D and the Copper Color Awakening doing great work. All our family doing great work. Ty Battle dropping the poems. Hi Mark dropping drop after drop after drop. Natural by law got some incredible drop. Perusalem just dropped some great drop. Let go, man. The universal spirit is the blood of that dragon. The spirit is in the blood. Again, in the physical sense, this is the process of vaporization. When you dig on the alchemy drop, just, just put in king drop, alchemy is going to pop up. Dig on that and come back to this. You know what I'm saying? The universal spirit is the blood of that dragon or the creator spirit is in the blood of that dragon. All right? The spirit is in the blood and what do they do? They eat the blood. They eat the blood. They eat the blood. They have a way, a art, a magic art of preparing the blood, the dragon flesh, the blood. And they partake of the blood against the accidents of old age. And prolong their lives. And make their intellect settle beyond all estimation, man. They go beyond in their intellect. They go beyond in their lives by eating you. By eating you. If they get life from eating your dragons, they might get life from eating you. But let's go. We're only talking Thoth. The Thoth spell barrier. 
the dragon as a fabulous winged being, the dragon as a fabulous winged being symbolizes philosophical renewal. Just like the dragonfly symbolizes renewal, change, you know, changing rapidly into into this uh, freedom. It, it symbolizes freedom, renewal. So the dragon symbolizes renewal, seeing clearly. The dragonfly symbolizes change. Or the initial pulverizations. In other in other instances, the image of a dragon or revered represents the divine mercurial water and its tincturing power. All right, so drop the big words. Uh, the image of the dragon represents water and power. Water and power. Water and power. Wata ha wata pawa. Hawata pawa is what's being represented by this dracon. Well, we're talking about the alchemical dracon. And yes, they know how to slay your dragon, right? What does it mean to slay the alchemical dragon? Only the act of or the product of con, con, conientio. You call it conientio. The coming together of opposites. Wow. So they use the coming together of opposites to slay you, to slay your dragon. Remember integration, integrating the schools, integrating the coming together of opposites. What happened on your lands, my Naga? The opposite came to you, right? It was the coming together of opposites. You got invaded, right? By your opposite, right? So the coming together of opposite slayed your alchemical dragon. This happens Physically, in all dimensions, it happens in alchemy, on all octaves, it's the same. It's the same. It plays out on all levels. Le the slaying of the alchemical dragon is the coming together of opposites. This can slay the alchemical dragon, commonly written as the mercurial dragon. The dragon slayer Cadmus, C-A-D-M-U-S, look that up. Because this must be an elixir, C-A-D-M-U-S. So this must be their dragon slayer elixir. Their magic, their necromancy embodies the fixing properties of sulfur. Okay. Now, you know what I'm saying? This ain't no secret, you know what I'm saying? When a so-called white person gets wet, sometimes their hair kind of smells like a wet dog. or has a, it, it, It's that sulfur in them. They have extra, they have, a, they have sulfur. Right, they have this, you know, sulfur embodiment that comes out, especially when it's wet. It smells like the same as dogs, because dogs also have the same sulfur. It's it's a wet dog smell. You know what I'm saying? You know, this ain't no fashion session, but it's the it's facts, man. So you're dealing with sulfur and sulfur enriched people. Your opposites, right? Coming together of opposites, slaying your dragon. The dragon slayer, Cadmus embodies the fixing properties of sulfur both the moisture wet dog smell both the moisture and the sulfur must be removed to stop the process represented by the dragon wow you pull up this link now you see the difference between the alchemical dragon remember it represents this mysterious what they're calling quicksilver a mysterious substance of un known origin but they know so much in alchemy how can they know so much and so little at the same time how can this truly be a mysterious substance of unknown origin and how can 